it's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a... Hi, everybody. We're back. Yes, the Grand National didn't send any of us on the road to some posh island in the middle of nowhere to uh, spend our real cotton gains. Uh, well under Sam Whaley Cohen, though. Uh, he and I went to the same school. I think that's where the similarities end. Uh, <laughs> in any event, um, congratulations to him. Congratulations to Noble Yates. But it means we're going to have to keep working at this. And so I have the two experts on this. That's what it says here to tell me what's going to win this weekend, because, of course, we turn the spotlight very, very much on Ireland this weekend with the three days at Ferry House starting on Saturday and climaxing with the Boar Sports Irish National on Monday. And, of course, with Punchestown and then the Guineas, a new market to come before the end of April. We are living in exciting times. Delighted to say we have a very special guest coming on the programme shortly. Francis Casey talks the Irish National. Stay tuned. But first, let me introduce... Uh, champ.ie's answer to the two Ronnies. Ronan Groom of the Irish field, <laughs> young, talented, uh, tipping ability needs improvement. <laughs> Barry Doyle, who is the chairman of the Inertia Fan Club and is disappointed he's not riding this weekend because that means he's got to talk about some other horse instead. Okay, Jen, what we're going to do is we're going to start because the at the time of recording this, we do have the final fields, and that is Fairy House Saturday. First day of three, of course, uh, with Gold Cup on Sunday, the novice race, and then the national on Monday. Uh, the opening day, uh, really more about hurdles, with the exception of the ladies' national, uh, than it is about the fences, because two very good hurdle races, the £50,000 INH Stallion owners, novice handicap hurdle series final uh, with 18 in it and then the ribo handicap hurdle which is the two mile race hundred thousand euro guaranteed and we have 20 runners in that so uh, i don't know whether you got the job at clairvoyance weekly did you um ronan um they don't come much tougher these two feature races are going to take some sorting out so why don't you start yeah two good two good betting races mike um Let's start with the novice handicap hurdle is the 415 uh you know this is this is always fiendishly difficult to get a to get a hold of um you know um, novices a lot of them stepping up to three miles for the first time um a lot of them have scope to improve anyway but might might even improve for coming up on trip i think the one i wanted to talk about mike the interesting one for me was the, the emmett mullins runner the man of the moment himself uh he's got ernie mccracken in here um in the Cape Gentleman colours. Uh, he's just interesting. He's been well backed a couple of times this season, not least the last day at Turles. He went second to Bally Adam Destiny there. The pair of them pulled 20 lengths clear. He's only actually <clears> gone <throat> up five pounds for that. That was his first run over three miles. Uh, I think he has a lot to suggest that he could be much better than a mark of 120, or at least he has the scope to uh, to jump further than that mark. And you know with Emmett Mullins, I think everyone knows now that he's he's okay at priming one up for a big handicap. Um, you know, what a what a job with Noble Yates last week, breaking all sorts of trends with him and uh, the serious confidence went to target train uh, Emmett Mullins has. And I think he's probably had this in mind for Ernie McCracken from a long way out, like he does with a lot of the big handicaps. So that'd be the one I'd be looking at there, Mike, in the four fifteen. Uh I'll jump ahead then to the four fifty, the Ribo handicap hurdle. Um no, Willie's got a lot in here, and it's obviously significant that Paul Townend rides far out. He's quite interested in the five-year-old. He ran quite well in the county hurdle. I think I like another one of Willie's, actually. I like this La Prima Donna. I think it's just interesting. They could have went for the big grade one, the mayor's race on Sunday with her. Uh, she was in there, and it makes sense to go there because, you know, the chance of black type or running quite well in that race and make her quite valuable. But they've come here to try and maybe exploit a mark of 125. She was uh, she was fell at the last or the second last, I think it was at Limerick when she was up up against a horse called My Lighthouse who is also trained by Willie Mons. They were they put two of them were pulling miles clear that day. My Lighthouse goes for that Grade One I think on Sunday and has since finished second to uh, in a Grade Three back at Limerick. So I think that's pretty strong form. And before that, the Prima Donna was second to Dino Blue down at Clonmel. 
So I think she's got loads of scope off a mark of 125. So she'd be the early one I'd be looking at for the, the big ribo handicap hurdle on Saturday. I think she's around 10, 10 to 1. Of course, she carries the honeysuckle colours. And um, I think I'm right in saying, well, he's got two in the race and for Kenny Alexander because isn't Brian Hayes' horse, is it Hella? Similarly yeah, owned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Rachel Blackmore rides Hurricane Cliff. Uh, it's an intriguing race. It's also a race where you need to be, I would imagine, ridden pretty close to the pace. Barry, what do you make of these two? <clears throat> Very interesting um, that you mention ridden close to the pace, uh, Mike. In the, I'm going to come straight through to the 450, uh, the Rybo. Uh, really competitive race. Townen obviously has chosen Farout, um, who ran a cracker, of course, back at uh, Fairy House in the Royal Bond meeting. Um, it's a very competitive looking race, and I think there could be a bit of value um, at double figure prices in here. Um, you look at the likes of Farouk, Esky Lane, Glan, they all have obvious uh, claims. Glan is a, is, is a filly that I've, or a mayor that I've liked for, for quite some time. Um, but interesting, the tactics that Danny Mullins might use on tax for Max, who um, by Maxius has a, a stout German uh, pedigree, flat pedigree, uh, this horse. Uh, very interesting. It was only finished two and a half lengths uh, behind Farouk um, when they, when he last faced uh, him and was off then for 232 days. I like this chance of going into the county hurdle. But this horse is the type of horse that I think you ride him cold or you ride him out the front. And Danny Mullins, I'd be fascinated to see, will he ride him forward? He was midfield in the county hurdle. Um, ran a big race for a horse that had a, a long layoff to a point um, before actually falling in the race. Obviously, State Man went on to win the county hurdle. Uh, but just interesting, the tactics. This horse, is he a bit claustrophobic? He was ridden midfield. He, he pulled quite hard. He's been gelded. Um, he did run over hurdles as a as a full horse, uh, but has been gelded. Uh, interesting, Danny book for the ride on him. He's off 130. Uh, one, I thought that was a nice mark, but my selection, he's 12 to 1. I'll play him, uh, but my number one selection is Iberic de Sol, uh, Jordan Gainford uh, for Gordon Elliott, and he's a 14 to 1 chance. I thought he was running an absolutely massive race in the Boodles. Um, you know, he was ridden cold. Uh, he was quite uh, he was quite cold in the betting before the race, actually. But it was running a huge race, was getting into contention, made good headway, and absolutely took the last out of the ground. Finished seventh in the end. Uh, I think he could be better than his mark. Um, nice type, has a nice bit of experience as well. He'd be my probably top selection. Uh, Ibrick de Salle, 14 to 1 for Gordon Elliott. Has run well at Fairy House previously. And so I quite like Eric Bloodaxe, actually. I know people think I'm completely mad. Carrying top weight in that um, uh, novice handicap hurdle series final, Mike. Just before, a, mm, sorry, come on. Got a victory over Fernie Hollow to his credit, but interesting they put the blinkers on it and they're persisting, and they've got Shane Fitzgerald taking five pounds off, so they've gone with that rather than with Joseph's cousin um, JJ Slavin. Interesting for me that. Mike, just Anything before you else come on Saturday, on. that's caught the eye. I was going to say just before you come on from Saturday, Mike, in the three or five. Uh, Shan Goel for, for Norman Lee, a consistent mayor, has been, I think she might be coming to the boil at, at potentially, you know, the, the right time. She she carries a light weight here, 10 stone five. Shane Callahan claims an extra seven back over fences. Um, I think she's very interesting. She's, she's a nature old, not overly raced, um, jumps well when, when like, when, Last couple of runs of, of has been over hurdles. Um, interesting. She goes back over fences here. Um, there's no prices in here, but I, I'd imagine she will be quite a juicy price in here. So Shan Goel, Norman Lee, three or five at Fairy House. Shane Callahan up, and she's rated four pounds lower over fences than she is over hurdles. Anything else for you, Ronan? Yeah, well, seeing as we're, we're we're creeping a bit of flat into this uh, this episode of the Champ of the podcast, I'll go down to Cork on Saturday, and I think there's a couple here that are really interesting. The five ten uh, is a ten furlong handicap. Uh, look out for a horse called Safe Cracker for Johnny Murta. Johnny started the season quite well, and Ben Cohen is riding this horse from a couple. You had a couple in here, Johnny, and uh, Ben Cohen's going to ride this. It's Godolphin owned. Um, he ran a huge race at Akura last season in a 10 furlong maiden. He was second to a horse called Interpretation, 
who won a couple of times since at a higher level has gone on to be rated 110. This safe cracker is rated 86. He's ran uh, next time out, he won his maiden at Dundalk, and then he's backed off the boards at Dundalk uh, in August for a big handicap there called the Red God Handicap. It's a premier handicap. He went off 11 to 10 there in a the 12-runner field and uh, just didn't see it out. He finished third there to the Ides of August. I think this horse is really interested back on turf now. He's only four-year-old. He's only had a few runs. Lots of scope to improve. The the one thing that, that that killed me with him was the draw. He's been out. He's out in sixteen on the round course at Cork. Isn't ideal, but I think he's really interested going forward. Maybe maybe he doesn't get home here in his first start, but maybe for one of the bigger Premier handicaps over ten furlongs this season, he'd be really really interesting. And then just throw one more at you. Kevin Prendergast has a horse in the last at Cork five forty five called Aha Boy. It's owned by the same fella. He owns Randox, uh, Mister Fitzgerald. Um, also owns Royal Rendezvous. Um, it's interesting he has a flat horse here with, with Kevin Prendergast, I think. He ran seventh on his uh, first start of the season, the current miles better than anything he showed last season. He was 300 to 1 for that race. He, he was really caught the eye running on. He's got a mark of 69 for his handicap debut. I think he's really interesting as well. So that's Aha Boy in the 545 of Cork. And I'll throw one in as the last word on Saturday. Quite a word for this. Fascinating one of Henry de Bromhead's with Rachel Blackmore up in the opener at Ferry House. Ballybow native, a good winner of a point to point, making its hurdling debut. So that's Saturday. Sunday, of course, we have the Gold Cup, the big novice race as the highlight uh, as we count down towards the Irish Grand National on Monday. Um, any thoughts about Sunday, Ronan? Yeah, look, the, uh, the Gold Cup. It'll be good to see Gallup at the shop again. He's more or less declared for the race. While sports are priced up, they make him odds on, twos on. It's it's hard to see what will get close to him if he jumps around. And um, that's it's that's not really a betting angle into him, Mike, I guess. At this early stage, we need to see declarations. Uh, the one I'd be slightly interested in, just in the betting now, he's, he seems quite a big price, is Master McShee. Uh, so maybe in the betting without market come Sunday, he, he'd be interested. And he ran second to uh, Gallop and the Champs, Leopard Sound at Christmas. And then uh, maybe a little bit disappointed in Nav in the last day, but I like the way they've, um, they were going back down a trip there and uh, to come back up to two and a half miles and they've skipped Cheltenham completely to come here. So he'd be a fresher horse to most of his rivals. Um, which I think is interesting. Paddy Corkery has uh, has kept him back for this. Um, look, the mayor's uh, the mayor's novice hurdle is 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 wide open as well. Um, Grangy was is the favourite there. She caught my eye at Cheltenham. She's well, I'm sorry, I say favourite, or I'm presuming she's going to be close to favourite. Obviously, Love em. Envoy is over for Harry Fry as well. Grangy, I thought was a big eye catcher in um, the mayor's novice hurdle. She was ridden cold that day. She came through. I thought. Paul Town and could have brought her through a bit earlier. Um, uh, she, she was running on quite late in the day. It's good to see Love Envoy over uh, for Harry Fry. He's won the race before. Uh, and he, just for her sake, uh, the, the ground is probably the biggest thing. I think it's yielding at the moment, Fairy House. I know Harry Fry has been in touch with Fairy House quite a lot over the last week or so, just to check in on the ground, making sure that there'd be enough rain or the watering enough for her to... To come over and run but if it did get quick or it was a very sunny day on on uh, on sunday she might be one to take on uh grangy might be the one to do that with grangy carrying the colors of a horse called cabaret queen which we've discussed of course of on course. Uh, previous uh, episodes of the champ.ie podcast um barry what about you on sunday uh, Gallop and Deschamp just just on the whole decision to go to Fairy House. I know he was entered twice in 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 Punchestown. Hundred percent the right decision. He's a two and a half mile horse. He's not. I can't see this as a Gold Cup horse personally yet. Um, in terms of his best qualities are his. He jumps in these days, but to go an extended, you know, three miles, two furlongs next season, I can't see it. I think this is the race to go for, um, and wins. Um, as regards the mace, the mayor's race, this is a race I always look forward to. Has thrown up great winners in the past. Honey Suckle, of course. Um, I thought Colin Murphy's mare potentially interesting uh, in Pervious. Um, she's one I'd like to see run a big race. Love Envoy is going to be very difficult to beat. I think she's running, put her up on the the road to Cheltenham last series for Cheltenham next year, and he's, he's taking her on here. Maybe she is vulnerable though. Um, you know, especially the ground is. Is key to her. Got up in trip. Um, she's quite. She's quite a buzzy filly as well. So it'd be it'd be interesting to see how she 
um, how she copes, as it was in the prelim. She is stepping up in trip. She she can be quite keen. Um, so may, maybe might just take her on here. And, and the one, if she does run, um, we haven't seen her since it was the Dublin Racing Festival. Say goodbye uh, for Gordon Elliott um, in the Rob Core colours. I thought you, she ran an absolute cracker uh, behind Party Central at Leperstown in the Dublin Racing Festival. I thought she stayed on way late at the finish. That was in the, in the handicap grade B hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival. She's a filly that could um, could be interesting here if she lined up. So she'd be one. We don't have prices, obviously, as of yet. Uh, impervious and, and say goodbye would be the two of interest. In terms of the rest of the card on um, Sunday we're on to now, it's, look, there's some good racing on. I think Gallop and the Champ wins. There's nothing really else that has caught the eye on Sunday at this point. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking about the, the the Irish National. Which we will do in just a moment or two. Mind you, of course, it is a three-day meeting at Ferry House over the Easter period, and it reaches its climax at five o'clock on Monday with the running of the Horse Sports Irish Grand National. Uh, interesting that Franco de Porta Manila Times currently top weights what will run and what won't, where we have to wait until Friday to find out. But a fascinating runner in this is the seven-year-old Max Flamingo, a uh, winner, albeit of a beginner's chase at Thurley's last time. Could he give Francis Casey a dream passport to the winner's enclosure on one of the most prestigious days in the Irish racing calendar? Francis now has charge. Dennis O'Regan is booked to ride and Francis has been talking with Barry about his hopes for what would be the most sensational of results. So delighted to be joined on the Chantilly podcast, episode number 17 of the season by none other than Francis Casey. Big weekend, of course, for yourself, Max Flamingo, the seven-year-old. What does it feel as was having the, the, the second favourite for the national, the Irish national? Look, he's well in himself. And look, there's issues with him staying and whatnot. I don't have any worries. I think he's stay. I think he's all about staying. But look, I'm there to be proved wrong. He seems to jump well enough. And if he has a clear passage, the ground should suit him. And if he has a clear passage and a bit of luck, he I think he, he, he runs a pretty big race. Look, he's he, he, the grand horse. He has had some issues down the down over time. And uh, nothing that he couldn't be sorted out. And he went to the sales as a three-year-old. I didn't sell him because obviously he wasn't getting enough. And they seemed to think he was too small, which he isn't. He's a big enough horse, which, you know, yourself, big horse, bring their own problems. And brought him home. I never went with another horse. I was so disgusted by what went on. I never went with another horse to the sales again after that. Because although he had huge interest in him, some said he was a bit small, but there was a lot of interest. And there wasn't a bit of them in the sales, and it wasn't as though we were looking London for him. There was a, a, a base price of 15 grand. If, if he made that, he was sold. And I led him round the ring myself, and when I brought him out, I was nearly knocked down for those for those who wanted to buy him. Of course, they wanted to buy him between nine or seven and nine thousand. And I said, basically, fuck you. If you, don't want, if you want to buy him out, then you couldn't bought him in the ring. So that was it. So I brought him home and tried to point lads and that were looking for him. And I just more or less said, so if, if, if you can get him to win something, sure, I could do it just as well. So that was the story. Put him into training and got him going. And he's won a few now. And so look, if he never wins another one, doing something for him. Yeah, great. And, and I suppose you, you mentioned his size, Francis. Um, you mentioned he's won a couple of times. Twice over hurdles, in, including Fairy House last Easter. And... I remember actually that day he was thinking he about a bit of bit. Last year. Yeah. And he won despite everything because he did really had the course. And then turning in, he clipped heels and ended up on his knees mm. and still won. And he was unfortunate then in Pointers Town. He finished fourth. Look, he was probably good enough to be second to Capadano, but there was a number, I think there was three false starts, and he got left up the start. And there was a, 20, a field of 24, and he went around the whole lot. and Look, it didn't work for him. He finished fourth, and he was meant to go to Killarney, but he's a bit of heat in the joint, so mm. he didn't go to Killarney. I thought he would have won down there. But you look, that's it. And he went over fences this year, 
and ran well in a few beginners chases. The fourth, the second, the fourth was in in the stall. He wasn't really ready then, but we were brought him down to Company Palace Rock. He was favourite for the the tag hole, so he fell in that, and we just brought the horse down just for company basically. Mm. And he ran all the way till it was too short over two miles. So then he went to Fairy House. He finished toward the Gabby No Go. I think about two and a quarter lengths. So I just said to the lads, "This could be a national horse, an Irish mm. national horse." So we had that on our mind from then on, and we we wanted to see. He was second then to Noel Mead's horse, who might be running the national and one big grey horse. He was second to him, and then he went on to was toward, fought in the, the grade one he was only beaten the neck for towards which would have been grand in the black type then if he was toward and not a grade one for the, the rest of the progeny but he wasn't just on song then we thought he was off colour and that but he ran and he ran respectful enough so that was the story he ran down in a handicap in the Leopard Town he mm. had uh, Paddy O'Donnell and uh, unfortunate for him at the time, he didn't realise he was injured. It was only the next morning when he woke up. And he said he wasn't with a girlfriend, so we couldn't blame her. But uh, he was a bit black and blue in the Nether region. And he went to hospital and he wasn't even to look at a horse for another six weeks, I think. So that's when, when Dennis O'Regan came back in. He rode him and he rode a few others. He won on Palace Rock. He won two on him. He went to, no, he won one in Ace and then he won then on Max as well. And he was he ran he rode Rocky Boy as well. He should win in the future. So he he rode him as well. So so he's back in like one one man makes fortune becomes another man's fortune basically. And that's how Dennis is back now. Yeah. And look, I, I suppose the race as a whole, Francis, I mean look, seven year olds and novices tend to have a I suppose a very good record in in the race. What, what are you making the shape of it this year? What do we make it? Well, a lot of the better horses have gone out. There was, I think, 18 of the top bookies ran in Liverpool last mm. weekend. They will see some of the Dingham Town horses will return again, but they was they're probably over there three or four days and the run four might too. I know some of them fell early on, which is probably horses galloped around after. And I'm sure that will take something out of them. There won't be as good if they didn't go over, put it that way. Mm. So, look, it, 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 it'll only help our cause. I thought Willie Mullins has looked, looked to pick the, the, the favours. Just on, on farm, just going through them myself, I thought he looked fairly useful. His farm has worked out. He was toward in Cheltenham and the, the first and second, I think we were first and second then since in Liverpool, reversed the farm. Mm. And they tie in with the, the winner of the English National. So it is very good form. And like really he's not going to be going there half cocked. <laughs> yeah, look, I suppose you mentioned look the, the, the trip. Obviously it's uh he's never ran over the extended three mile. Um one over two mile six, am I right in saying Fran Francis? What what would be the I suppose in, in terms of how how he may he, he may be ridden, like is is it is the plan to go forward with him or, or drop in? he doesn't drop in too far because like so like the winner of the English national maybe look at the the man gave him a friendly ride he was out last I think coming to the fourth or the mm. outside he's glad he's weaved his way but like all you need is one one horse to fall in front of you or something like that and then like up there you make your own your own look all right the horse last year went out in front and led the whole way free wheel and doing now I wouldn't expect our to do that I'd be open and I'd be worried if he was there sitting ninth or tenth or something like that. But like I'm not going to be on, on the saddle. So look at once I let him go out the braving, I have no control over that. It's all up to Dennis. Like he did say to me, he'd see what way hopefully he he be forward early on, but then everyone else wants to do the same mm. and he'll judge the pace then. Look he's he's an old hand, he'd be happy to be the oldest chap in the middle, or one of the oldest. And uh he know what way the pace is going. He's as a novice now. He's had a bit of experience, so that's it. And he's run in a few handicaps with horses around him, and did all right. I know he unseated in Leopardstown that day, but just, that was just unfortunate. The way it goes. I believe, like the trainer, he's he's fond of catching dials, homemade brown bread. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, 
Tony, you know, your father's due to, to, to deliver feed tomorrow, and I promised him I'd make him a, a real lad. I'm very good at the real lad. <laughs> I'm open me tonsils at the moment between lamb and sheep and whatnot, and between pressing and things. But uh, I told him, well, I won't be there, Brian, so I'll have to get you the next time. Mm, well, look at me. Sorry. So okay. when, it, when, when it, if you're there, when he gets, if you're at home that weekend or whatever, make sure you get a bit of my real lad because you won't taste anything anywhere else like it. No, I heard good stories. In fairness, uh, Francis, Palace Rock, quick mention. Obviously, was very impressive at uh, at Nice and uh, has got up a few pounds. What's the plan? How, how's he been since? Yeah, I, I always thought he was my dad, but he's had some relationship problems. Back and it doesn't seem to go right, and there are always better. Now, we check him in the flag and get on the right hand and go. Can change all the 10 pounds better going left hand. Mm. But I think we have more or less them issues. He put up a splint before he was meant to run the last thing, race. Mm. So he was two weeks off, and he came back brilliant, and he was flying. And then I don't know what he was acting the maggot out in the field, which he does a lot, but. All of a sudden, then, he just wasn't moving right. So, my plan was to go back to Kalani for the big handicap hold. He was fourth or fifth in the last year, but he's gone over the top of that bridge because he's over 17 hands. Now, he's only a five year old, like to say, he was going last year, mm. but he has matured an awful lot. So, I said, the hell with it. I had him down with Anthony last night, the two of them down, Anthony Coyne and the chiropractor, mm. and he was all caught up in the chest, which would. Just, would would fit the way he had been moving of late. So when I decided to hell with that, we won't run him anymore because we'll screw him over fences and we leave him to the back end and hopefully he'll screw over fences as well, which I think he will, and we go next year. And I still think he is my top horse. He could, I'm, I'm hoping he's my great one horse. That's what I'm hoping. Now he's a lot to come on from that. But I think he'll be a match of over fences. Because when I when I was schooling him, I schooled them all loose from the young, a three year old, and I'd have jumps out in the arena, and I'd let horses out in the arena every so often. Mm. When I'd let him out, he'd go out and he'd start jumping himself, even if he went in the, around the place. He'd just keep jumping and jumping and jumping for fun, and he'd show off the other horses. There could be three or four of them out in the arena, and he'd show off. So I said, I'd start you out. <laughs> so I put the wings up in, in front of the horse. So he proceeded then to jump wings and all. <laughs> so and he jumps a hole very well, except the odd the odd time he can he put a howler in the last the, la, the twice he won over horns, the last hole he was red for. So that's it. he can do that. But I think because he's so big, he's over seventeen hands, he's a monster of ours, I think a fence will actually suit him better. Mm. But you know is but you're, look, I think he's one for the future, I think the world of him. Because he's some cruising speed and he has he has it every way. He just needs to get his head in order. He runs like a horse that has wind issues, which he has no wind issues. He carries his head very hard. Mm. But I I know why he does that and I'm hoping I have it sorted, but I'm not gonna go into it because I would be mentioning names of people and whatnot and we won't yeah. go won't go there. Yeah, well, look, that sounds exciting, certainly, um, for next year, Francis. And uh, look, wish you the very best this weekend, and hopefully, the Irish national winners standing in the air. Great to hear from Francis Casey. We wish him luck. Those of us that had dealings with uh, his old man will long remember it. Yeah. It's alongside the likes of the Brina and Oliver Brady, and the greatest characters of all <laughs> Irish racing through the years. Um, but of course, has he got a winning prospect in the Irish National? Waiting on the final field looks as fiercely competitive as ever. Uh, Barry, is this a case where your heart tells you one thing and your head tells you another? No, the Max Flamingo wins the Irish Grand National steam train pulled out on the Monday show. Um, after Christmas, was it Ronan? 33 to 1, we, we flagged this horse up. Um, and look, now 10 to 1 for the race. I think he's absolutely laid out for it. Laid I mean, out for the about race. Novices and... in, in a race like this. I mean, novices have had a great record in the Scottish mm. Grand National, uh, but this is a huge race. And if, I suppose the other problem we're trying to weigh up here is it's the last of the three big nationals. 
because of the way the calendars worked. You've had Aintree and you've had Air, now you've got yeah. Fairy House. And in other years, we've been trying to weigh it up, and it's been first on the uh, on the conveyor belt. Yeah, well, look, I, I'm as in terms of Max Flamingo, Mike. Um, I'm as strong as you can be about a horse for a for a Grand National. Um, I think this horse will run a big race, uh, ten to one. I think that's only going to shorten. There's still value in here. I think you know he's, he's a novice, a seven year old, have good record in this uh, experience. He's had seven runs over fences, jumps efficiently, um, stout staying pedigree. Have no issues with the trip. Um, and, and I suppose look 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 back to his form at the course last year, last Easter. Uh, he was everything went wrong for the horse. He was bumped around the place. He was nearly brought down at one stage. Um, still came around around the wide outside under Dennis O'Regan and, and, and won his race. I think everything has been about this race for Max Flamingo. Um, that's what I love about it. Um, and look, it, it, provided the horse runs his race, which I don't see why he wouldn't. Um, I can't see him out of the picture. Um, so 10 to 1, big value here. Um, and it's a, it's a very strong fancy for myself. I suppose one, if someone doesn't like to back a horse at that sort of price in a Grand National, you're looking for one at a bigger price. Um, the one that uh, ticked a lot of boxes for me, um, what well, was interesting actually, I don't think it, it didn't tick so many boxes. One that's sneaking under the radar here is Tom Gibney's Velvet Elvis named after me in my wedding suit at Christmas. Velvet Elvis, uh, a six-year-old organised confusion was a six-year-old when he won the race. Tom Gibney won it in 2012. Um, he's only had four starts over hurdles, but he's a very good jumper. Uh, I reckon he'd probably be ridden forward. Um, we, oh, I suppose, look, all his winning has been done at Navin. I loved his win the last time at Navin. It was on deeper ground, but I love the way he travelled through his race and jumped. I think this horse has a lot of upside. He's best priced 33 to 1. Daryl Keefe is booked. So you don't need to worry about, you know, declaring this horse will run. Daryl Keefe is, is, is going to ride him. Love his way of going. Um, love the way he travels. Love the way he jumps. I think the race will suit him very well. Uh, he's up 10 pounds for the last time, but I think this horse is, uh, is, is a, a big price at 33 to 1. So I'll be playing too. Max Flamingo, very strong fancy, but also Velvet Elvis. Uh, in the same race. If you're looking for a third one to run well, Fakir Delan. Uh, Gordon Elliott, um, what about you, Ronan? This, you, you, the, you're trying to work out exactly what messages Elliott and Mullins are going to actually send to the races, aren't we here? Yeah, absolutely. I have a bit of uh, a bit of a line on one of them, at least I'll get onto in a second. But just what I looked at the national, you were talking about novices there, Mike, and um, the first place I'd look is for a novice chaser. Four of the last seven have gone to novices. Uh, it would have been five of the last seven, but for 150 to one shot free Will and Dylan last season. And one of those races that the novices didn't compete in or didn't get close to winning was that slog when General Principal won and there was about five across the line. And it was it was experience was the, the order of the day that day. So a standard running of the the um irish grand national i think you're looking for a novice now you're looking for that unexposed chaser who's who's got a bit more leeway with his mark and and that's probably why the likes of max flamingo galliard de may neil are full-time score towards the top of the market barry's mentioned two of the horses i like and uh, the one i do have a small line on is fakir delen um down in gordon elliott's this week uh gordon elliott is uh, lucky to do uh, a big interview with him this week um and uh, so that's a nourish field on saturday a small little plug but we're right, talking no. about the national um and fakir delen was the first horse he mentioned um and it wasn't surprised when i heard him say it uh he's got kind of got a nice profile for the race he's only had five starts over fences he went ran fourth into kim muir uh cheltenham was a huge run it was uh, the kim, yeah. muir is off, kim muir is often a, a race that kind of produces a national type of horse in the same season and uh Ty did it racially well there. And, and importantly, Gordon said that he's a horse that a lot of his horses, Gordon was worried about the ground going, you know, being a bit quick for, but Fakir de Len was the one he kind of thought about would be okay on quick ground. So he's got loads of scope, Fakir de Len, and 25 to 1, he's still available that. I'm pretty sure he's going to be declared famous last words, but seems Gordon has, has looked at this race for him as, and as the first horse he mentioned, I'd be very surprised if he wasn't among declarations uh, on, on Friday. Uh, so 
I'll, I'll back the fact here to Len just before I came on there, 25 to 1, I thought it was a, was a big price. Uh, the other two I'll give a quick mention to. Barry's already mentioned Velvet Elvis, so I don't need to go through him again. I think he's really interesting for Tom Gibney, though. Obviously, he won the race and having a great season. Tom Gibney, local trainer, uh, laid out for the race, probably unexposed as well over the three mile trip. And one uh, I also like is Jaron Me for, for Noel Mead. Um, he's unexposed over a trip. He's not a novice, but he's unexposed over staying trips. Uh, and he ran his best race uh, at Punchestown last season behind Bram a Bull in a big stay and handicap chase. He could be interesting at three brother. five, and he's a big price. So yeah, very sweet on Fakir to then I have to say, uh, Mike. Well, I'm you know the Normead horse that I'm interested in is this Deal Kerr. When won the Leinster National, was fourth in the Thyestes. Um, if one could work out what's coming out of Tuvar, that would make life a lot easier for several of us, I think. But Just a it, really Mike. good, sorry, a really on. good race to say the least. So. Um, it's five o'clock on uh, Monday. We're actually going to give you a week off the five cast. We're going to concentrate on these um, big races. But as already uh, Ronan has alluded to, the flat season has begun. And of course, there's only a fortnight to the new market guineas. The current guineas not until the middle of May. But clearly, uh, some of the Irish horses that might be flying across to East Anglia at the end of the month have been going through their paces. And uh, clearly, too, we've seen a couple of big handicaps run already. So what we thought we'd do is just get the, the lads to flag up a couple of horses to follow for the flat season without being specific about what races uh, they might run in. Yeah, I like a couple. Uh, look, a couple of fillies uh, I've just flagged up, uh, ones that I've had a, a small yeah, few bets on for classics. Um, yeah, Tuesday is a filly I backed for the 1000 guineas um she was second to discoveries at the cura last season in june uh, discoveries has obviously went on to win the moy glare and uh, so she's a group one winner so that was a big run on um, first up for uh, tuesday uh, and she was sent out quite early this season to win her maiden at nace and um, she obviously had a little bit of a setback after her debut last season so but she's been given uh, an early an early start this season possibly to get her uh, revved up now for for a new market which I, where i believe she goes she's uh she's a obviously a daughter of galileo and lily langtree which makes her a full sister to minding which is one of my favorite ever flat horses i have to say minding which might surprise you but i thought she was sensational uh philly minding uh, really really rock solid um and uh tuesday i'm not saying is, is going to be as good as that but uh i've already got that kind of link in my head and uh, i just thought it was interesting two big runs so far uh so i'm going to latch on to her the other one i like is an oaks filly potentially uh, it's philly called above the curve for uh joseph o'brien she's american pharaoh philly uh, and this was one that i another one that i kind of heard about when i was down on uh, down on the famous owning hill uh joseph was quite sweet about her uh thought she was definitely you know up to group standard at least she duly got the job done first time out at leopard sound and thought she did it really nicely then stayed on really strongly could see her going for an oaks trial uh and and, and really becoming a big player for for the oaks then either the epsom or, or irish equivalent so uh, above the curve and tuesday be my like two two flat horses to follow it doesn't really you know the next couple of weeks is always very difficult isn't it because you know you have a situation where you um you're looking at horses on the flat, but still got half an eye on the jumps uh, with um, what should be the most wonderful week at Punchestown. Still sort of in the in the in tray, as it were. I'm going to throw one in, only a horse that went straight into my notebook. Um, it often throws up a decent one. Does the back end program at Nottingham in the UK, very much based on two year olds. And Roger Varian's Elder Alderoff bolted up in a maiden over a mile. Uh, the ground was good to soft, so it wasn't extreme. It's the horse that's by Dibawi out of uh, All at Sea. And therefore, of course, it's by Sea the Stars. I think that's a horse to watch. Eldar Eldarov is the name of the horse. So um, what we're going to do now is, first of all, remind you, if you haven't already, there's a button called subscribe. That is the first thing to do. Please click that button and you'll be treated to more exclusive thoughts, revelations and homework by our team led by these two quotes gentlemen close quotes they are of course great gurus of all things equine 
and the talent for spotting four legs is nothing short of legendary. And also, <laughs> we will bring back the five cast when we start getting into, as it were, the routine season where, you know, there are meetings at the weekend. It's just with the Irish National on Monday and declarations being late and one thing and another that we're doing it slightly differently this week. But please subscribe and then you know every week uh, you'll get your dose of the Groom Doyle show. And I have to try and referee. I'm going to get a new uh, white shirt and bow tie to make sure that I can do that. And we'll be bringing other guests in in the weeks that lie ahead. So what I want then, please, uh, gentlemen, is a nap from Fairy House uh, Saturday. And then just remind everybody again of your best bets for the Irish National. So um, simply limited, Barry, to Fairy House Saturday and your nap. My nap of the whole weekend, sorry to burst the bubble, Mike, is Max Flamingo in the Grand National. I'm very, very bullish in a Grand and, National. And Ronan? Um, I'll go with Ernie McCracken in the 415, the, the big uh, novice. Righty-ho. And then one other each way or whatever from Fairy House over the weekend, Irish National or whatever, taking in uh, Sunday and Monday. And, of course, there is a slight risk that you might be tipping non-runners, which is probably the best use to all the punters because I mean, they won't lose their money. Um, what do you think, Ronan? Uh, yeah, on Monday, Mike, um, I, uh, I like Flame Bear. Possibly he's going to run here for Pat Doyle. Uh, he's a horse that likes, I think has been saved for this kind of spring ground. Uh, and he's on. Uh, he's won his last three. I, I really like I like what he's done in his last two starts, especially at Nice. Um, yeah, so I'm going to... He's in a, a grade two there over two and a half miles uh, on three hours a Monday, so I'm looking out for him. Well, let us remind you, of course, that the Irish National has amongst its past winners Arkle Desert Orchid. Really is a fantastic horse race, fantastic experience to be in County Meath at five o'clock on Monday. You've heard what the lads have to say, and they've got about seven days to work out the next task, because, of course, this time next week, It'll be Fairy House in the history books and the small matter of the Punchestown Festival. Hope you've enjoyed this edition of Champ.ie's weekly, quite unique podcast. No, we don't give away the recipe. Hope you'll be back with us next week when it will be Punchestown. And also, it will be the final day of the British Jump season with the Bet365 Gold Cup at Sandown to look forward to. Uh, my thanks to... Uh, Barry Doyle, never in the field of race tipping of so many relied on so few for so little. And also <laughs> to Ronan Groom of the Irish field. That is not true. The legend, but I gather he brought the entire computer system down today. And so he's got to go back to work to put it all back together again. We'll see That's you true. soon from the champ.ie <laughs> team. Bye-bye for now. It's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind novices. An argument by...